He was an ugly, pathetic loser who turns out to be the strongest hero after saving the princess from a curse. Lloyd is a young loser from a small village named Cumlin famous for producing legendary heroes. He dreams of following the footsteps of his grave ancestors, but knows it will only remain a dream because he's so weak that even a rabbit can kill him. After meeting his big brother for the first time in years, he gets hyped for hearing about all of his adventures in the city and decides to go there himself to become a soldier. Once he arrives there, he requests a hot witch named Marie to let him stay with her, which she immediately rejects without mercy. Before she can kick him out, he pulls out his balls and places them on the table and a holographic message from his village chief, Alka, opens up. The sight of the lowly chief immediately gets Marie on her knees, reminding her of her only fan days when she was being mentored by the lowly pimp. Alka asks Marie to take care of Lloyd until he joins the military academy, and Marie has no choice but to accept. The next morning, he cooks breakfast for his new caretaker because the only things he can beat are eggs and his meat. While chatting, he casually flexes all of his different abilities, which he thinks are no big deal, but leave Marie completely shocked. She can't believe how easily he uses ancient runes and gets excited to test his amazing stamina during his stay. Later that day, he steps out to explore the city, where he runs into a young woman who is being harassed by a monster. It attacks her to eat her out, but she jumps out of the way and rolls onto the ground. She gets back up and tries to put up a fight with her sword in hand, but the gigantic insect flaps its wings and creates a strong wind current that sends her flying towards a wall and falling face first into the ground. Lloyd swoops in on time and kicks the monster's head down, which instantly kills it. The sight of him effortlessly picking up the grasshopper and throwing it across town makes more than just the girl's heart drop. While he tends to her small injuries, she nervously introduces herself as Selen while blushing at her Prince Charming, but he doesn't seem interested and politely ends the conversation so he can go back to his wife, Wu Marie. The next morning, Lloyd reports to the town square, just like the other military academy applicants, and sits quietly on the outskirts because all his competitors looks big and scary. However, the one-armed fearless mercenary named Riho sitting next to him senses his strength and gets spooked by him. He tries to raise her up, but a cute blondie tackles Rio down and takes her place. He recognizes her as Selene, the girl he saved from the grasshopper, and asks if she is applying as well. She excitedly nods her head and starts rambling about their future together. Thankfully, the beginning of the combat test is announced and all the contenders are made to line up in front of dummies. The challenge is simply to attack the metal dummy with any weapon of choice. When Lloyd's turn arrives, he steals himself with determination and picks a sword to make his best attempt on the dummy. The army chief Melfin notices his unique aura and decides to keep an eye on him. However, when the test results are revealed later that day, Lloyd discovers that he did not make the cut. This failure makes his self-esteem hit an all-time low and he struggles to figure out his next step. Just then, he notices a help-wanted sign from the local McDonald's joint which wants to hire a part-time burger flipper. He decides to go beg for the job because if he can't kill people by sword in the military, he can kill them with diabetes. As soon as he enters the joint, he is attacked by the manager named Chrome, a former royal guard who immediately senses Lloyd's super strength and suspects something is fishy. He entertains Lloyd's request to show his skills in order to instigate more. Lloyd makes a delicious risotto while trauma dumping about his life. As soon as he serves the dish, Chrome has a food wars moment and is absolutely blown away by the flavors in his mouth. Lloyd immediately gets hired, which gives him the courage to show his face to Marie again. Back at the school, Melfin, Riho, and Celine are shocked to find out that Lloyd did not get admission and form a mini-detective team. They take a look at his written test answers but only see random scribbling on his answer sheet. They conclude that he is just an idiot when Melfin's underling named Colin points out that those doodles are actually ancient runes. She explains that ancient runes enables a person to wield magic in ways much more powerful than ordinary wizards. Realizing that it was a complete mistake to reject Lloyd from the academy, Celine and Rio vowed to get him in by finiting the missing Princess Maria and claiming the prize of money and getting a wish granted. Later that night, Lloyd tells Maria and Alka that he failed the test and that he wants to try again next year. Alka offers to take him home and train him personally, but he insists on staying with his waifu Marie. Alka eventually agrees but declares that she will be staying here and third-wheeling them. As he runs to the kitchen to cook dinner for them, Marie requests Alka to lend her power to the kingdom as it is at the brink of war with the Jew Empire thanks to the masterminds who are controlling every move of the king. However, Alka refuses because the people of her village only involve themselves in external matters that are of superhuman scale like demon kings. She also threatens to take Lloyd back to Cumlin if Marie ever brings up this issue while staying with her. The next day, Lloyd instantly makes the previously hated Crone restaurant a viral hit with his mouth-watering dishes. He bumps into Melfin and Rio, who came to check what Buzz was about and are shocked to see him work there. However, he basically ignores them and goes to throw out the trash. 
when he notices Marie sneaking into a nearby alley. Two soldiers go into the same direction in a hurry claiming that there is a fight going on there. Lloyd immediately decides to follow and sees that Selen is in a duel with a local noble Alan because he is a jerk that hates her. He pulls out his axe and dashes towards her before jumping into the air and slashing down at her. However, seconds before it can hit her, her belt blocks the attack and knocks the axe out of the noble's hands. She proclaims that this is because of Lloyd's powers and once she notices him in the crowd, runs towards him like a true waifu. The instructors at the academy rush into the scene and demand an explanation for the fight. Celine offers no such explanation and claims that Lloyd has come to fight Alan in her stead. Surprisingly, Melfin and Colin allow this duel, leaving Lloyd no choice but to get his manicured hands dirty. Alan stupidly underestimates him and gives him the first move. Just as Lloyd is about to land a devastating punch at the noble's face, a tornado surrounds him and carries him away. As he regains his senses, he sees that Marie is the one carrying him away. They land on a nearby roof away from the action, and Lloyd thanks Marie for saving his life and promises to do anything she asks. This causes Marie to get a bit too excited as she lets her imagination run wild. Crone turns up there and asks Lloyd to return to the cafeteria. Once he leaves, Crow kneels before the witch and offers to help her take down the king's puppeteer. That evening, Melfin works overtime when Colin asks him why he is taking all of this so seriously. He launches into his sob story and tells her about how the enemy Jiu army attacked his hometown when it was already very poor and hungry. Since then, he has vowed to stop as many wars as he can. The next day, Lloyd greets Celine and Rio when they come to visit Marie. He serves them tea while Marie is away and Celine shamelessly simps over him the entire time, making Rio realize that she shouldn't have believed her claims of being Lloyd's love. Once Marie returns, the girls ask the witch about the princess, to which she claims she knows nothing about while acting very suspiciously. As Rio and Celine grill her, Marie's guilt builds up and she blurts out that she is the missing princess. This completely goes over Celine's head, who is only interested in knowing if Marie is Lloyd's secret wife. This allows Marie to deny ever admitting she is the princess. But after realizing that their intent is to find her, in order to get Lloyd into the military academy, she agrees to reveal who she really is if they tell her every detail of the military academy and the castle's current happenings. Lloyd guesses that she is the kingdom's Batman who is trying to save the kingdom from ruin, and that he would love to be her Robin, but she harshly rejects him by saying that he is too weak to fight by her side. This breaks his heart and goes off to cry like a little Rio and Celine demand to know why she was so rude to him when he is clearly very strong. She sits them down and explains Lloyd's real backstory and how she is forbidden from involving him in this conflict. She then admits to being Princess Maria and reveals that she has been planning to save the kingdom from entering war by abandoning her name and secretly hunting down the culprit who she believes has taken control of the king by magic. Celine and Rio agree to help her in this mission. That evening, Crone goes up to the king to request him to take him back as the leader of the king's guard. Melfin, who is standing guard for the king, asks him to leave and assures him that they will reach out if needed. Crone gets annoyed and accuses Melfin of being the culprit and asks him why he is doing this. Melfin almost instantly confesses and reveals that he thinks a weak king who can't control his corrupt subordinates to do good for the common people deserves to be a mere puppet. Just then, Rivo, Maria, and Selen reveal themselves from their hiding place and Marie directly confronts him as the princess. The king hears the princess's voice and turns around to sinisterly welcome her back. They immediately realize that he is now under a spell and being controlled by a third party. He suddenly throws Melfin against a wall and reveals that he caused the attack on Melfin's village to make people like him hate the king and support a war. Now that he has successfully possessed the king with the help of Melfin, he simply turns him into a mindless monster to fight the intruders. As Maria tries to follow him, Melfin rolls loudly and stops her in her tracks. However, Chrome steps forward and asks her to go after the king and release him while they take care of the monster. However, before she can move, the monster charges at them, but Rio immediately steps in front and holds him off as the princess leaves. The princess walks into a dark throne room, where she finds the king sitting on his throne in the dark. She launches her magical tornadoes at him, but his shield deflects them all. She then tries to pierce him with her shards of ice coupled with blasts of fire, but none of it affects him. She then jumps at him with killing magic activated in her palm, but just as she is about to hit him, the evil entity uses her father's true voice to stop her in her tracks. She is caught off guard and he takes the opportunity to knock her away into the floor. He picks her up by her hand and threatens to kill her right then, causing Marie to be filled with dread because she doesn't want to die before apologizing to Lloyd. He then reveals that he is the demon lord Abaddon whose dream is to control the world. Meanwhile, Alka arranges a date night with Lloyd at the festival to cheer him up after Marie's rejection with the hopes of winning his heart for herself. However, the night is ruined when a herd of giant grasshoppers stampede the area. 
Lloyd strikes a blast of air into the monster's face and knocks the entire family out of existence. As Alka examines the corpses, Lloyd senses that Maria is in trouble and insists that he go and help despite him thinking he's too weak to do anything. Meanwhile, Lloyd is running to the palace and on the way knocking more monsters out left and right. He runs into Alan, who has been hiding like a coward and is unable to move ever since he saw the monsters. Lloyd remembers the first time he saw a monster and empathizes with him, so he recites a self-help book quote from his memory which motives Alan into action. At the same time, Alka has decided to let her crush go and handle the endless waves of monsters that show up at the fair since she can tell that the demon lord of Baden is involved. She sits on top of a rune in the air and summons giant rocks that she launches at the monsters to bury them into the ground in a second. On the palace balcony, Melfin launches a relentless attack on Chrome, but the ex-king's guard leader keeps jumping out of the way. He then takes the opportunity to punch Melfin as soon as he gets one, but he is blocked at the last minute. Melfin knocks him out with an uppercut and throws Chrome into the wall. He then dashes to Riho and tries to kick her in the face, but she blocks him with her hands. However, the transformation into a monster has given him immense strength, which he uses to push Riho into another wall and injures her seriously. Selen steps in front of him and asks him to attack her, as her Delulu brain believes that this will call Loy here since his heroine is being dominated. She suggests that he also put their assets on display so that it motivates Lloyd even more. Melfin is annoyed by her attitude and charges towards her and scratches at her with his claws, but her belt blocks it to everyone's surprise. Eventually, Melfin is drained of all energy from repeatedly failing to land a hit on Celine and is knocked out by a whip from her belt. At that moment, Lloyd enters the palace and is glad to see all of them alive. Celine runs into his arms, but being the top G that he is, he ignores her and goes up to check in on Chrome. Just then, Melfin stands up and dashes towards Lloyd, but the guy goes all talk to my hand and knocks the monster to the ground. Lloyd then starts talking about how a soldier like him should be protecting the happiness of ordinary people. His words seem to stir Melfin's consciousness and eventually Lloyd's pep talk gets through to him and begins freeing him from the curse. However, Lloyd seems to misunderstand the situation and says that Melfin disgraces honor as a soldier by overdrinking and getting intoxicated during the festival, which is such a dumbass accusation that Melfin willingly becomes a monster again to kick his ass. He dashes towards Lloyd and tries to punch him in the face, but the weirdo dodges it by bending over backwards. He stands up and headbutts the monster which sends Melfin flying across the room and causes him to crash into a wall. He loses consciousness and Lloyd immediately decides to go look for Maria. He doesn't have to go far because Maria breaks through the door with the king right behind her, who is hot on her tail. Lloyd is so stupid that he assumes that the king's weird behavior is because he is also drunk. He enchants his handkerchief with a cleaning spell to wipe the weird goo off the king's face. The king tries to pull up a magical shield, but Lloyd deactivates his magic with a snap of his fingers. He goes on to give the king a good rub, which makes the demon lord run out of the body as soon as he can. As the king falls to the ground, unconscious Maria runs into her savior's arms, which obviously triggers Selen's insecurities. As the dust settles after the whole incident, Lloyd is happy to see that life is back to normal in the city, when suddenly his brother Shoma shows up on the scene. Lloyd runs into the arms of his big brother, who is here to deliver goods for the festival stalls. Just then, they see Alka running towards Lloyd with chocolate bananas, and Lloyd loves bananas so much that he does not notice that Shoma has disappeared on seeing her. Chrome gains his former royal guard position back and tells Colin that she shouldn't worry about her crush Melfin because he has simply been sent to the outskirts to do hard labor for punishment. Meanwhile, Lloyd enthusiastically gets ready in his uniform to attend the military academy, which he got admission in thanks to Alan who asked the higher-ups to let him in out of gratitude for the pep talk, which helped him face his fear of monsters. The students all head to school to start off a new session of adventures and learning. Later that night, Maria and Crone take Lloyd to a nearby village where a legendary sword is stuck in a rock and the fact that it can only be taken out by someone who is insanely powerful is being used by the greedy mayor for his get-rich-quick schemes. Lloyd easily pulls the sword out and after happily rooming the mayor's entire business built around this weapon, they head back to the city. The next day at school, the students start to train for an inter-school magic tournament in hopes to pull their school out of a long-ass losing streak. Colin takes the students out onto the field where they are asked to practice their magic on anti-magic dummies. First up is Selen who shoots a ball of flame at the dummy followed by Ryo who does the same. This manages to cause a surface level burn on the dummy, which leaves the class impressed. However, Lloyd who is called up next shoots a gigantic fire blast at the dummy and manages to shatter it into pieces. He is immediately blacklisted by Colin as she is sure that he will end up killing someone in the tournament. 
Meanwhile back home, mercenary sisters Philo and Mena show up as Maria is chilling and tell her that they are looking for a strange girl in a photo. Suddenly, Philo senses an overwhelming presence near the door and immediately launches a kick just as the door opens, causing Lloyd who was trying to enter to be greeted with kicks on the head and in the back. The fact that the strong kicks did not affect him at all causes Philo to spiral into an existential crisis. Given the low EQ that the boy has, he just ignores her and notices that Mina is holding a photo of Rio. Just as he is about to spill information without thinking, Philo comes up to him and asks him to make her his slave. Maria interrupts and throws the sisters out into the streets where they belong. The next morning as tournament practice is underway at the school, the headmaster of the biggest rival school, Roll, shows up. She simply walks up to Riho and threatens her to come home as she wants people that she cares about to stay alive before she walks away. This leaves Rio depressed for a few days which makes Lloyd ask her out on a date as he believes that his company can make any woman happy. He takes her to a cafe and after insisting her to talk for a while she launches into the story of her life. She tells him that she grew up in an orphanage where she met Roll. She had a natural gift for magic and started teaching Rio, but because of her missing left arm she could not do anything. One day, Roll came home with a prosthetic arm made of the strongest element, giving Rio the hope that she could finally be of help at orphanage. However, she soon found out that the real reason her sister gave her the arm was to make her pull out the holy sword, which would inevitably end with her losing her own life. After such a betrayal, she ran away from the orphanage and has stayed on the run despite all the false warrants Roll creates against her from crimes she didn't commit. The story moves Lloyd and he holds onto her hand and promises to protect her at all costs. After this hot cup of gossip, Selen, who was hiding nearby to keep an eye on Lloyd, reveals herself and promises on everyone's behalf that together, they will fight to protect Riho. A few days later, the first practice demonstration of the tournament is about to start when suddenly Maikona, the head of the second year class, jumps down onto the ground from her hiding place on the rooftop of the school building. She boldly proclaims that she will be the one to participate in the demonstration, and not Lloyd, which Colin allows. Once the match begins, she charges up her attack and jumps up high before landing a fireball punch on her opponent Philo. Philo just then casts a spell and sends a powerful water blast that throws Mikoma into a wall. Lloyd walks up to her to help her, but she just swats him away angrily. She goes to Maria's to get her wounds fixed where they end up chatting over a cup of coffee. Just then, Lloyd enters the house which causes Maria's focus to completely shift to the boy in Mikoma, simply walks out into the rain with a broken heart and rushes back home. The next day, the interschool tournament between Lloyd's school, Azami Military Academy, and the rival school, Rokuju, begins. Chrome proudly announces that the prize for the winning school is a generous fortune and the holy sword. After a bit of trash talk, the tournament begins with the first match between Selen and Philo. Philo shoots a lightning blast at Selen. The belt princess waits for her belt to come up and defend her against the attack, but the belt seems to have become unresponsive. Just at the last moment, she jumps out of the way of the blast and falls face first onto the ground. She is not given even breathing time as Philo starts shooting fireballs at her immediately. As she keeps trying to get the belt to start defending her against the attacks, Philo summons more lightning strikes from the sky and chases Selen around the entire field. Philo decides to end a match by summoning an overpowered lightning bolt from the sky and just as it is about to hit Selen, the belt finally powers up and shields her against the impact. Selen gets up to face her with renewed confidence and shields all the lightning attacks that Philo shoots at her. Once Philo gives up her attempts, Selen ties her up with the belt and lifts her up to finish her, but just then is disqualified from the tournament. The referee claims that using the belt is a form of physical attacks which are not allowed in the tournament. The next match is between Mena and Lloyd which begins with Mena shooting a water ball at him which wraps itself around his face. However, 10 minutes pass without him suffocating as she had planned so she gives up. She then summons a giant pillar of water and fog to surround and isolate Lloyd but somehow he is able to see through it and figure out her exact location. He immediately shoots a powerful blast of air at her which causes her spellcasting to fail and the explosion throws her against the wall which causes her to lose the fight. Rawl and Rio, who are up next start with blasting fire at each other. Their attacks meet in the middle and Rawl plans to defeat Rio by causing her to run out of magic. Rio eventually grows weaker and Rawl's magic manages to hit her, but she avoids serious injury by jumping out of the way just in time. Rawl then dashes to her and takes off her metal arm that amplifies her magical abilities and throws it away. However, Rio takes advantage of her closeness and punches her in the face, followed by a mini explosion in her wrist, which throws Roll onto the ground. As Roll gets up, she notices that Rio's arm also got damaged in the blast and sees a magical stone fall out of it, which must have been the true source of her power. She is surprised that she could go as far as planting in her arm. 
Ryo's arm heals completely because of the healing magic that she has been learning from Colin all this while. Looking at her power, Roll faints and Ryo is declared as the winner. Roll dreams of her past and how she had to struggle to reach the rank of headmaster in her school and how she will need the holy sword to climb higher. Just then, she wakes up and notices that she is in an infirmary. Her informant is in the room too who tells her that he has located the holy sword and tells her that it is currently with Lloyd and the person responsible for it is a weird witch. Roll decides to win the witch over to her side and sends a letter to her, with Philo who immediately realizes who the witch is. Once she is in the city, Philo sneaks into Maria's home. She kidnaps the witch and leaves a note behind for Loy asking him to hand over the holy sword in exchange for her. Just then, Alan shows up at the door to hang out and Lloyd immediately heads out with him after telling him what had happened. They run towards the meeting area where they notice Philo standing like a creep. Without wasting any time, Philo dashes towards Lloyd and punches him as hard as she can but he easily blocks her as expected. She pulls back and runs at him with Godspeed before jumping in the air and landing a spinning kick at him. He dodges it, but she throws another one in his face. He blocks it with his wrist, but is pushed away due to the impact. Hitch annoys him enough that he agrees to a duel. He asks Alan to hold on to the sword as he pulls up a box and asks her to an arm wrestling match. Their strength causes the surrounding place to get insanely windy and causes Alan to lose balance. He gets up and runs into an alley to avoid the impact of the wind, but as soon as he enters the alley, he notices a fireball coming his way. He jumps out just in time to avoid it, and notices Roll's informant standing there ready to shoot another one at him. He asks Alan to hand over the sword, and when he refuses, starts shooting mini fireballs continuously at him. He starts to run away to dodge the attack, but just then the informant's face gets stuck in a water ball that came out of nowhere. As he falls to the ground, Mena steps out and declares that she is here to get in the way of Roll, since she heard her calling Philo a dumbass, and is a woke feminist who cannot stand her sister being treated as a tool. Meanwhile, the arm wrestling is getting nowhere and the force breaks the box beneath them. They jump into the air to continue the match, but eventually Philo uses her force to push Lloyd onto the ground. Just as he starts to fall, Lloyd summons his powerful wind magic which pushes the both of them onto the ground and as the dust settles, he notices that Philo has been defeated in the arm wrestling match. Philo immediately gets raised by his immense power and asks him to marry her right then and there. He asks her to cut the bullshit and tell him where Maria is. She immediately folds and tells him that she never kidnapped the witch. Maria just got too fed up with Alka showing up repeatedly in her place without warning that she went to the store. Roll is watching all of this from her window and out of annoyance at how useless her comrades are starts kicking the crystal that Philo brought from Maria's house. This causes Alka to appear and because she cannot see Lloyd anywhere around her she gets pissed off and shoots a hole in the wall with her fire magic. Roll falls into the river nearby due to the explosion and Alan rushes to save her despite the others telling him that it is not necessary. Roll wakes up in his Ami school's infirmary to see Ryo walking out of the room after leaving behind fruits for her to eat when she wakes up. The headmaster stops her just as she is about to step out, but Ryo walks out without paying any attention to her. The next day is the last day of school before summer break. As Lloyd is packing his bag, Ryo walks up to him and asks him out to join her for the horse races. Before he can answer though, suddenly a depressed selling shows up. Her family has called her back for the summer break, and thus she will not be able to enjoy hot spring dates with Lloyd as she had initially planned. She wonders what she can do to avoid the situation and suddenly plans to set her house on fire and come back. Just then, Alan shows up and starts acting like a drama queen to gain the trio's attention. Once they ask him what is up, he tells Lloyd that he cannot be with him during the summer as an ideal apprentice should. He then starts flexing the fact that he has a marriage interview and does not seem to be able to shut up about it. As he snaps back to reality, he notices the girls dragging Lloyd out of the room out of boredom. Lloyd reaches home to find Maria and Alka fighting each other. As usual, due to his amazing room reading skills, he thinks that this is the appropriate time to tell them that he will be going away to do a live and part-time job at a hotel, which pisses them off. They immediately decide to get jobs in the hotel themselves, but Lloyd pulls a Sigma chat move and asks them to not come as having girls around will just prevent him from learning anything. The next day, the hotel owner Koba is waiting outside for Lloyd when he suddenly senses his overwhelming presence. He suddenly gets a jump scare when Lloyd comes up behind him and starts talking, which causes him to fall to the ground. He curses Chrome for not warning him about the immense power that this dude has but decides that life must go on. Lloyd is given a tour of the hotel when he is surprised to see such a huge ass building. The hotel owner then reveals that something very strange has been happening in the hotel lately where people are randomly found in a comatose state. While there have been no deaths, it's obviously very disturbing, which led him to contact the king through Chrome. 
Lloyd assures him that he will help him get rid of this curse and Koba takes Lloyd to introduce him to his senior manager, Kikyu. As soon as Koba leaves, she hands him a mop and asks him to start cleaning and launches into a lecture about manners. However, Lloyd gets bored and uses his super-fast speed to clean the entire swimming pool area in a minute while treating her as a white noise machine. Before Kikyu can react, Koba takes Lloyd away to the next task. He hands him a neatly folded hotel uniform and in a very serious tone tells him that a bridey noble is arriving early in the morning the next day. He tells him that he is to help make sure the noble's stay goes smoothly. Lloyd just takes this task up with full determination as the seriousness of the task sinks in. The next morning, as Lord 3 and 9 is welcomed into the hotel by the owner, Lloyd lays out a royal breakfast for the noble. The noble sips wine while he observes the trees outside and asks Lloyd what he thinks of them. Instead of giving a basic answer like a normal person, the dude launches into a full speech about how they are a complete waste of space just like himself. However, the weird noble finds this topic of discussion interesting, and they soon strike up a conversation. Kobat is watching all of this and is surprised that the grumpy man is capable of liking someone as the noble goes on praising Lloyd for his knowledge. That night, Kiku sneaks into the noble's room to give him intel on the latest happenings around the hotel. Threonain is sure that illegal trends are being cultivated in the forest by the owner who is using his experience as a former soldier to hide evidence. She then asks him the reason for his early arrival and he tells her that he got amazing intel. An annoying local lord is trying to arrange his son's marriage and Threonain has heard that the lord has been buying trance recently and making a shitload of money. He wants to use the arranged marriage as bait to get information and even though using his son hurts him, he needs evidence. Moreover, a treant sapling called Demon Lord's seedling was stolen from the research lab and he has heard rumors that a traveling merchant brought it here. The sapling is parasitic and may be the cause behind the comatose customers. He adds that it is known to amplify the host's physical strengths which immediately reminds the girl of Lloyd. She tells him about the boy and as soon as he hears the story, he hands her a herbal antidote for the parasite and asks her to mix it in his food. It will expel the parasite from his body and bring him back to normal. The next evening, she finds him in the kitchen and brings him tea with the medicine mixed in. When he asks her why she is working so late, she tells him that she is on the lookout about the coma breakout. As they make small talk, she learns that he is a soldier in training and assumes that he was a naive boy tricked into becoming a host. She hands him the tea, and just as he is about to take a copa barges into the room scaring the hell out of Kikyu. He asks Lloyd to get some rest and dismisses him from his duties for the day. Just as he leaves, he scolds Kiki for sipping tea in the middle of her duty hours, but before she can say anything, he grabs onto the cup and gulps the tea down. However, he immediately spits it out because of the weird taste, and Kiku takes advantage of the distraction to jump out the window. Koba's suspicions start to rise after seeing her jump so confidently from such a height. He vows to get to the bottom of the mystery as he realizes that the incidents became more frequent even since he hired Kiku. A few days later, Ryo checks into the hotel to relax and enjoy her vacations. Suddenly, Lloyd shows up to her room and she is surprised to see him here. The imbecile offers her a massage, but she just screams for him to leave. Their argument is interrupted by the sound of a carriage arriving at the hotel. As Kikyu opens the door, they are surprised to see Selen step out with her father, Hemin. She is immediately taken to her room, changed into fancy clothes by her maids, and pushed out of the room. Her father reveals to her that they are here for a marriage meeting with a noble, and she immediately remembers that Alan talked about it in school. She pretends to be sick and tries to sneak away. When her father stops her, she tells him that she is already looking to marry someone else at the academy, but her father refuses, saying that the noble has social standing. When she continues protesting, her father asks her to treat this just as practice for the many more interviews to come in the future, and walks away, leaving her pissed as hell. After a while, they are waiting in the dining room with three men whose son is nowhere to be seen. He tries to stall, claiming that his son is having trouble changing clothes, but all Selen can think about is ways to prove her love for Lloyd. Her brain then starts plotting Alan's murder, and just then, the door opens. As she picks up her fork to stab Alan in the chest, Lloyd walks in instead to her surprise. She jumps into his arms out of happiness and drags him away to enjoy some alone time. Once they have left and the shock wears off, the two fathers decide to get back to discussing business. Meanwhile, Selen drags Lloyd to an empty hidden room and gets ready to have some fun. Just as she is about to start, Riho shows up and grabs onto her head to hold her back. Once she calms down, she questions how Selen could be so dumb as to not find it suspicious that Lloyd showed up instead of Alan. They tell her that the housekeeping ladies found Alan lying unconscious in the outdoor bath and he was carried to the infirmary for treatment. Thriani then asked Lloyd to stand in for Alan and Rio took up Lloyd's role as a part-time worker in the hotel. 
When Lloyd tells her that they should be getting to the bottom of this mystery, she suggests that she should go exploring the hotel with Lloyd under the pretense of a date, while Riho investigates the hotel from the inside as an employee. Lloyd thinks that this is a good idea while Rio just stands there surprised that Lloyd is so stupid that he could not see through Selen's very obvious plan to get him to go on a date. Lloyd and Selen are busy with their PDA by the lakeside when Selen showers him with mushy compliments. Lloyd suddenly gets nervous as someone who has never been with a girl in his life which pisses her off. She commands her belt to hold onto his face while she forcefully gets him to compliment her in return. She is about to jump into his arms when Rio appears out of nowhere and bonks her on her head and asks her to get her act together. As she is reminding the two of their real goal, they are interrupted by Shoma showing up on a horse cart. He is surprised to see his younger brother there and tells Lloyd that he is here to deliver a huge order of firebombs. While Selen takes the chance to cling onto Lloyd pretending to be scared of firebombs, Riho senses some weird aura around Shoma. Lloyd notices her looking at him and introduces them to each other and him being from Lloyd's village explains his powerful aura and calms her down. Lloyd then fills his older brother up on the recent developments in his life, and after chatting for a while, Shoma declares that he has to leave for his next delivery. He asks Lloyd to take care of the fire bombs and leaves before he can protest. As Lloyd and Rio are wondering what to do with the fire bombs, Selen immediately grabs onto his wrist and drags him back to their date after dumping the job on Rio. Later, as Lloyd and Selen are sitting in a boat, she starts talking about her past to break the awkward silence. She tells him that the curse belt was a part of her father's antique collection. Once while playing with it, it wrapped itself around her face and since then, she has always been looked at weirdly by everyone around her. Her father tried a lot of things to help her but nothing was successful. She adds on that she is really grateful for the belt as that is the reason she was able to meet her soulmate. This triggers the dude's insecurity and he starts talking about how he always needs help and can never deal with any problem alone. Selen reassures him that since he helps so many people around him, everyone is always eager to help him too. Meanwhile, back inside the hotel, Koba wonders why 3 and e must have made a decision as weird as getting a stand-in for a marriage interview. He realizes that he must waste no time to figure out what the hell is going on in his hotel. They continue with this hopeless romantic conversation for ages while Kiki watches them with a telescope from the woods. Just as she is wondering what to do about Selen, the belt princess starts dancing on the boat which eventually ends up overturning it. Lloyd immediately grabs onto her and jumps onto the shore where he places her down safely. She waits patiently for a chance to catch him alone and off guard when she suddenly notices Selen leaving. As Lloyd is enjoying dipping his feet into the hot water spring, Kiku sneaks up on him, but he immediately senses her coming and turns around. As she comes out of the shock of being caught, she makes an excuse telling him that she is here to treat him to a massage. Lloyd's face immediately lights up and he starts begging her to teach him how to give massages that make girls go crazy. After a bit of hesitation, Kiku agrees and they start by massaging his torso, while she tries to find the location of the parasite. When she does not find anything, she decides to go lower, but just then, a jealous Selen shows up and attacks her with her belt. Kiku dodges, but Selen continues attacking her with her high-speed belts. Kiku jumps into the air pretending to attack her, but immediately disappears. Suddenly, she shows up behind Selen and catches her by surprise by grabbing onto her waist. She picks her up and gives her a reverse slam, but her belts protect her head from hitting the ground. Just then, shirtless Lloyd gets up to enjoy watching the two girls fighting over him more closely which distracts Selen and Kikyu takes the chance to escape. After realizing that Kikyu got a chance to massage him, she wants to match her score and invites him to a bath in a hot spring. Just as Selen is about to get into the bath where Lloyd is already busy enjoying, Riho shows up to third wheel and ruins Selen's plans. As the girls are busy arguing, Alka jumps out of nowhere, but just before she gets into the spring, Selen uses her belt to drag her down and smash her to the ground. Maria steps out as well behind her and tries to get the village chief back to her senses. Lloyd is surprised to see them and when he asks them the reason for them coming despite him asking them not to, they make some excuse about their old joints needing some heat in the springs. As if there aren't enough girls on the scene yet, Philo and Mena, who are now their new classmates, show up to join them. They tell them that they are here, because the kingdom has asked them to look into the coma incidents at the hotel. Mena further tells everyone about the stolen tree and the illegal cultivation that is being suspected here. Plus, they will also be taking the opportunity to update the map of this area which has been pending for so long. Just then, Philo realizes that they are being watched and before anyone knows what happened and throws Alka into the air. She ends up macking Kiki down the cliff, and just as she crashes onto the ground, Threonine's secretary, Minoki, walks out of the woods. He starts transforming into a monster and reveals that he started growing trance on the mountain as he wanted to take revenge on his abusive master. He keeps rambling on and on about his plan when Kiku asks him to shut up and let her think. 
Just as it sinks in that Lloyd is not the actual culprit, and that the owner is not the one growing trees, she is suddenly drained of all her power by the monster. As the monster prepares to attack her, Lloyd arrives on the scene looking for Alka. He notices the monster and to everyone's surprise is able to recognize him. Lloyd then compliments him on his costume which enrages him and he calls out a demon army from the trees around him. The stupid boy still thinks that this is a show and theorizes that Kikyu is here to prevent him from entering the hotel dressed up like this. As one of the tree minions approaches them to attack, he knocks it off with a kick and assures Kikyu that he will deal with the monsters. Inside the hotel, the nobles are discussing the Trint's situation and Thriamine insists that Koba is responsible. However, Koba immediately counters saying that the incidents of Komatos started when he started visiting the hotel. Back in the woods, Lloyd has wiped out all the minions just as Minoki is headed in the direction of the hotel. Kiki realizes that he is going to attack the hotel, as he mentioned that he does not have enough nutrients to build up his power to the level of world domination. In the dining room, Hemain interrupts Koba's and Threonine's argument, saying that he did the treat business with Threonine's family. This shocks the shit out of Threonine, and he starts calling out for his secretary to look into the matter. Just then, the tree monster shows up at the window and breaks into the hotel, and threatens to finally kill his master and be free of his control. Just as he launches his tentacles at the three men Mina and Philo jump in the way and cut them off. The rest of the girls too enter the room and take up fighting positions. Mina throws a gigantic flame at Minoki, who manages to nullify her magic. Philo jumps up and gives him a spinning kick that throws him out the window. He again tries to pierce them with his tentacles, but the girls safely jump out of the way as they try to figure out how to defeat him despite his ability to nullify magic. He immediately tries to smash them under his tentacles, but they again manage to dodge. Selen jumps onto his roots and cuts his tentacles off with her sword before jumping back down. The tree then tries to body slam her, but she dodges and the tree hits the hotel. Just as a piece of concrete is about to fall onto her, Hemin rushes out and pushes her out of the way. Meanwhile, Rio has figured out a way to deal with the monster and she brings the cart with the firebombs along with Alan, whom she manages to wake up on the way. She points at the ongoing battle and asks him to start throwing the firebombs at the tree monster. He is initially confused, but his urge to impress takes over when he notices that the monster has picked the mercenary sisters up. Just as Minoki is about to stab them with his tentacle, Alan throws a firebomb and gets a direct hit that distracts the monster. They keep launching the firebombs as fast they can and the monster eventually loses his grip on Mina and Philo. The sisters land on the ground and immediately summon a water snake using their magic and command it to attack the monster. The snake wraps itself around Minoki tightly, while Ryo freezes him up with her magic. However, their celebrations do not last long as the monster's eye starts glowing red inside the ice and his tentacles suddenly emerge from the ground below them. While the girls jump out in time, Alan is too slow and as a result gets stuck. Meanwhile, Selen is trying her best to free Hameen from under the slab of concrete when another piece comes loose and falls down. Lloyd reaches the scene just before it crushes her and holds the pillar up with one hand before throwing it away. He then frees her father and asks her to take him to a safe place while he goes and joins the rest of the gang. He finally realizes that it is a real monster as Maria tells Lloyd that he is the only one who can defeat Minoki by striking his core. He immediately dashes towards the monster and uses his emerging tentacles to climb up to its face. He punches his face and pulls out the glowing eye to crush it to pieces. The monster's body then shatters into pieces just as Lloyd jumps off onto the ground. Shoma is watching all of this from a tree nearby and is excited to see what the future holds for his brother. Just then, Alka wakes up and finds herself buried into the ground up to her neck by Shoma to keep her warm. He walks up to her and reveals that he knows she's immortal, and that since the Holy Sword is out now, he can do a lot of stuff. After successfully annoying the hell out of her, he gets back on his way. The next day, the gang fixes the hotel and wipes the memories of the support staff. Threonine and Koba apologize to each other while Hemin reconciles with his daughter and promises to not be as shitty of a father as he has been for so long. He adds on to her happiness by giving official approval for Lloyd, which leads her to jump into his arms. Somewhere in the kingdom, Shoma brings Makona to an empty church to meet his master, Sue. She reveals that she is in love with someone, but she wants to kill the person who stole her love. They give her the treat medicine and the potion that would give her the Demon Lord's powers. Without waiting for instructions, she gulps both of them down at once. She grows sharp claws and wings and sets off to murder the love of her life. Back in town, Lloyd brings out breakfast for Maria when she claims to be weak and asks him to feed her. Before he can get any food into her mouth, Selling shows up and when she sees what is going on, she burns with jealousy. She immediately chokes the witch with her belt only to be interrupted by the others talking. Maria, who is now free of the chokehold, turns around and notices the entire gang standing behind her. 
Lloyd tells her that they are headed towards the castle to carry out a mission by the king to hunt down a giant snake. The kingdom wants to deploy the soldiers in training as well to gain experience by fighting this new monster that is causing trouble in the nearby dungeon. They also get a chance to show off how well they train the young soldiers, so it's a double benefit. As the cadets gather in the throne room, the king steps out and goes into rockstar mode because a self-help book asked him to be funny to be charming. Chrome shuts him up and officially announces the start of the mission. Before they leave, Colin walks them through the map and tells them that they will be the ones going inside while the actual soldiers stand guard at the door and keep an eye on the surroundings. Xiao and Shoma are sitting in town listening to the gossip for any news of the snake as it is a monster that Xiao has been looking for for many years. Just as they leave, Alka comes up angry that she just missed them and vows to put an end to Sue and his evil plans once and for all. She finds Maria walking on the street and asks her to take her to the dungeon, and before she can reply, Alka grabs onto her and flies off in the air with her as her Google Maps. As the cadets venture further into the dungeon's depths, Selen and Philo seize a moment to confront Rivo about her feelings for Lloyd. Before Rio can respond, a deafening thud echoes through the cave, causing the entire maze to tremble. Sensing the gravity of the situation, Lloyd, in another part of the maze, also hears the commotion and instinctively rushes towards the source of the disturbance to investigate what could be amiss. With hearts pounding and adrenaline coursing through their veins, the group braces themselves for whatever awaits them in the depths of the dungeon. Meanwhile, Alka and Maria directly land inside the dungeon through a hole that Alka blasts into the ground and Alka sets off to look for Sue asking Maria to go away. She blasts a hold into the wall and starts heading towards the center and Maria just decides to follow since she cannot go back alone. Maria gets lost and arrives at a ramen room where she finds a huge tree with an unconscious Makona in the middle. Suddenly the cadet wakes up and when Maria asks her what she is doing here, she reveals that she is waiting for revenge on someone. When Maria presses her further, she reveals that the person who stole her love is Lloyd. Maria is about to question her further, but before she can say anything, Makona wraps her tentacles around the witch and lifts her off the ground. She assures Maria that she will not hurt her as long as she agrees to call Lloyd into the room. Eventually, Lloyd does hear the commotion and shows up and Makona instantly lets go of Maria and flies off into the air. She flies towards Lloyd in full speed to punch him, but he blocks her and pushes her off using his strength. Without wasting any time, she sends out her tentacles to hit him, but he dodges them swiftly and breaks them using his bare hands. He picks up one of the pieces from the ground and throws it at her, but it barely misses and hits the wall instead. Makona then gives herself a boost and punches Lloyd with full force. Just as he is recovering from his crash into the wall, she grabs onto his face and flies from wall to wall, smashing his head into the walls. Lloyd eventually manages to grab onto her hand and throw her down to the ground. In another leg of the cave, the girls rush in the direction of all these boons and arrive in the room to see Lloyd rapidly dodging the monster's tentacles. Maria warns them to stay away, but Makona notices them and launches a few tentacles at them. Lloyd steps in front of them just in time and takes the hit on his chest instead. As he is trying to get up despite his pain, she tries mocking him, but he again enters his usual philosophical monologue which enrages her even more. She flies at him with god speed and hits him with a punch that he blocks with his palm. The impact starts emitting strong bursts of energy that cause the cave to start collapsing. As the girls escape the ground beneath their feet breaks open and Mikana and Lloyd continue clashing with each other midair. Mikona eventually knocks Lloyd to the ground and grabs him with her tentacles to smash him into a wall. He pulls an Uno reverse and frees himself by grabbing onto her tentacles before continuing to swing her around by them. He spins her around and throws her upwards through the ceiling into the sky. Just as everyone takes a sigh of relief, the giant snake wakes up from his sleep due to the commotion and appears in the room. The giant red beast starts patting Lloyd on his head, scaring the shit out of everybody. However, the snake assures them that there is nothing to be scared off and introduces himself as Vrutra the guardian of Lloyd's village Kunlun. He protects the magical seals and is responsible for maintaining Alka's powers. Lloyd asks him why he is here and the snake starts throwing a tantrum at how careless Alka is to have not shared the information. He then enters full-on rant mode and tells them about the time she tried to take his skin to make an apron. As they realize that the snake too is a victim, they wonder who is the culprit who gave Makona the train's powers. Just then, Sue asks him and Lloyd immediately senses a massive evil aura coming out of him. Before he can react though, Alka bursts into the room through the floor and gets ready to face Sue. She suddenly notices Vertra and they start making small talk which gives Sue a chance to climb onto the snake's body. He digs his hand into the beast's body and reveals his plan to eliminate the snake so that Kunlun's magical seal weakens. He pulls out Vertra's heart and the snake immediately disappears into thin air taking Alka's powers with him. Or so he thinks as Alka dashes towards him and smacks him into the wall with a punch. 
Just then, Selen's belt starts acting up and Vritra reveals that she has now possessed Selen's belts. This reminds Alka that instead of making an apron out of the snake's skin, she ended up cutting it so small that she had to sell it off as a cursed belt. This means that part of the snake is in the belt and hence his soul is still alive. So summons up a rune and disappears into it after deciding to retreat for now despite the others trying to stop him. However, they decide to focus on escaping as the cave is collapsing rapidly around them. Alka reveals that her crystal ball can act as a teleporter and the entire gang manages to jump in before the cave collapses completely. Once they are back home, Alan is given the title of the Dragon Slayer, as everyone seems to believe that he was the one who defeated the snake for some reason. Meanwhile, Alka announces her plans to return to Cumlin and declares that she will be carrying Mena with her. A few days later, a proposal for an exhibition match between the kingdoms of Azami and Yu lands on the king's desk. After careful consideration, he decides it's an excellent opportunity to strengthen diplomatic ties and showcase their kingdom's prowess. With a nod of approval, he agrees to participate in the match and selects Alan as their representative, confident in his skills to uphold their kingdom's honor on the battlefield. As the party embarks on Alka's journey to Kunlun, they find themselves trekking through a dense forest. Chrome and Colin too unexpectedly decide to join their expedition, adding their strengths to the group's collective efforts. Meanwhile, back at the castle, Mena takes charge of affairs in their absence, diligently managing responsibilities and overseeing Alan's training regimen for the upcoming match despite his initial reluctance. On their way, Alka takes them to a cave with a weird and colorful door where she calls out for her dwarf friend Yug. As Yug steps out, she immediately recognizes Vritra and grabs onto Selen's belt to pin the snake down to the ground. She scolds the hell out of him for listening to Alka and going so far from the village even after knowing that she messes everything up. Alka cannot take this insult and immediately grabs Yu by her collar and reminds her that it was the dwarf's idea to make an apron to impress Lloyd. Yu immediately changes the subject and pushes everyone through the colorful door to teleport them to Kunlun. Everyone is surprised at how clean and fresh the village is but Maria warns them to never let their guard down while they are here. They soon see the reason when they enter the village and are overwhelmed by the scarily powerful aura that each corner is full of. They are surprised to see even the most basic villagers having superhuman strength. Kids are jumping two storied buildings to bring back stuff that they forgot and people are using magic-powered cannons to throw themselves into the air and cover huge distances quicker. Just then, Lloyd's grandfather walks up to them with a huge perenha on his back. Philo immediately recognizes him as the person whose material she studied on her own to learn his unique fighting style. Alka then takes everyone to her mansion while Colin and Chrome head over to the wheat fields to meet Nelfin. Colin finds him right away and when she calls out to him, he is surprised to see them here. The trio then sits under a tree shade to catch up and Melfin eventually reveals that he likes the village life and does not plan to come back to the city. Listening to all of this brings Colin to the verge of tears because that would mean missing out on the love of her life forever, but decides to just suck it up. Back in Alka's mansion, Selen is busy handing out marriage certificates for Lloyd's family to sign when suddenly they hear ground-shaking bangs from outside. Riho steps out to get rid of the miscreant, but to her surprise, it turns out to be a dragon. She runs away from him at full speed while he is hell-bent on turning her into barbeque meat. She is saved by two young boys who launch paper airplanes at the dragon and cut his horns off. She is speechless out of surprise as the dragon eventually flies away out of fear. Selen steps out to mock Rio at her failure, but the kids come up to her to thank her as soon as she starts laughing at Rio. She ends up getting depressed herself as she learns that the paper planes were made out of her marriage forms. That evening, the entire village gathers at Alka's place to have a welcome feast for Lloyd where they have food that might put even Gordon Ramsay to shame. After dinner, just like your average nosy relatives, they ask Lloyd who his girlfriend is among the girls that he has brought home. The conversation soon turns to a voting session where people choose the girl out of the pack that they want their hero to marry. As everyone goes off to crash for the night, Yug and Alka stay up discussing Sue and their plan ahead to deal with him. They focus on the looming threat he poses, deliberating over their strategy to confront him. Lug stresses the urgency of the situation, reminding Alka that Vritra is on the brink of regaining his memories, which could lead to unpredictable and potentially dangerous outcomes. With time running short, they agree that swift action is essential to prevent any unforeseen consequences. As they exchange ideas and formulate their plan, the sense of determination settles over them, driving them forward with a shared resolve to confront the challenges that lie ahead and protect their comrades from harm. Meanwhile, in their dorm, the girls are ganging up against Rio, whom the villagers like the most in gifted, expensive clothing to. She claims that they can have Lloyd to themselves as she is interested only in the money that she will be able to make by selling these clothes. But the girls are too blinded by love and jealousy to think straight and by the end of the argument, Rio ends up rolled and tied tight into a mattress on the floor. 
In another corner of the village, Melfin is begging Maria to forgive him for converting the king and becoming his slave in the past. The big-hearted princess forgives him right away and asks him to tell her about how he got converted. He tells her about an evil-looking egg being given to him by a traveler. He presented it to the king and the king ended up becoming the demon lord and Melfin his slave. The next morning, Virtra wakes everyone up early and annoys them to set out into the forest to resurrect his body as he is now on the verge of disappearing at any minute. After some time of walking through the forest, they arrive at a castle near the mountains. Alpha tells them that this is the prison at the end of the world, the last dungeon that Virtra guards. The people of Cumlim are tasked with defeating demon lords who escape the dungeon and Alka is responsible for the harmony. With Virtra in this state, Alka's power is going haywire which means that inserting the key into the dungeon door right now would set all the monsters free. They reveal that the Holy Sword is the key and ask them to take good care of it. Eu then takes the belt from Selen and starts the ritual of reviving the snake. She pulls out a stove and cooks ham wrapped in the belt. Eventually, the belt gets trapped in a ball which ends up weakening Alka completely by finally severing her ties to the dungeon and setting her free. Everyone immediately decides to head back to the city as the exhibition matches are about to start soon. While the others head back to bid farewell to the villagers, Eve asks Alka to stay back as she has something to discuss with her privately. Eve takes her on a walk deep into the forest and suddenly Alka falls into a pit that Eve could set up as a trap for her. She reveals that she plans to steal a holy sword and unlock the dungeon to release the demon lords. Turns out, she pretended to resurrect Vritra, but in the process sealed him instead. She shuts the mouth of the pit just as she reveals to Alka that Shoma and Sue are on her team. A while later, as the rest of the group gathers at the portal, Yu puts on a facade pretending that everything is normal despite her evil intentions. With an innocent smile, she bids them farewell claiming that Alka will join them later due to some unexpected work that has cropped up. Urging them to proceed without hesitation, she emphasizes the importance of their mission and insists that they cannot afford to wait for Lloyd, who is not yet present. Moreover, she claims to have some important business to discuss with him either way. Once Lloyd arrives, Eu feigns concern and approaches him, inquiring if he has seen Alka. When he responds and the negative alarm flashes across Eu's face as she expresses her worry about Alka's well-being. Playing into Lloyd's sense of duty and concern for Alka's health, Eu subtly suggests that Alka may have collapsed somewhere in the forest because of her weakness. Fueled by a sense of urgency and determination to aid his friend Lloyd falls right into Eu's trap as his mind is clouded by concern for Alka's safety. Without a moment's hesitation, he immediately rushes off in search of her, unaware that he is walking right into Eu's carefully laid plan. Eu then steps through the portal and catches up with the gang when she notices that Melfin too has joined them. He tells her that he came only to say goodbye to Colin and is planning to go back immediately, but she tells him that she has locked the gate. She claims that she did it to relax a bit without Alka around, but the girls point out the absence of Lloyd as well. She tells them that she had to leave him behind to control Alka's emotions, which leads to Philo and Selen having a full-blown meltdown. On the other hand, Colin is happier than she has ever been because that means Melfin is stuck with her for at least a day. Once they are back in the city, all of them split up to go do their own chores. Lug walks up to Riho and knowing how greedy she is offers to buy her gauntlet for a special price and fix her arm underneath for free. Riho sends her away for a moment asking her for some time to make the decision and in the meantime makes a ton of money by selling trinkets that she has collected over this adventure. As Riho greedily counts her money in the bustling town square, Mina approaches her with a brown bag filled with kebabs. Seeing the longing look in Riho's eyes, Mina warns her to keep her distance from the food as it's intended as a gift for someone else. However, Riho, eager for adventure, offers to accompany Mana to deliver the gift, and Mana agrees. Together, they make their way to Roll's infirmary room, where they present the kebabs. To their surprise, they notice Roll's wounds healing at an astonishing rate. Sensing an opportune moment, Riho decides to broach the topic of the mysterious individual who had tasked Roll with retrieving the Holy Sword. Laurel, her memory still foggy, recalls hearing a peculiar sound akin to a child sucking on candy emanating from behind the man. Rio's mind immediately jumps to Yug, known for her penchant for lollipops, and she begins to ponder whether her suspicions about Yug's involvement are justified or merely the product of overthinking. As doubts swirl in Rio's mind, she realizes the need for caution in navigating the web of intrigue surrounding the quest for the Holy Sword. Rio and Mena then go with the other girls to the arena where the exhibition match is going to be held to report on their duty to help set up the venue. However, once they arrive there, Chrome asks them to run security checks of the surroundings immediately as the kings of Azami and Ju are planning to come and check out the stadium later that day. Chrome then announces that Mana will be accompanying him and guarding the king and drags her away, while the others start planning ways to chill in their patrol. 
Just then, Alan rushes onto the scene and seems to be hiding from something, and when Ryo asks, he reveals that he is freaking out about the match. As the conversation between Ryo and Roll reaches a critical juncture, their attention is abruptly diverted by the sound of the king's voice expressing gratitude to everyone for their efforts in setting up the venue. Turning towards the source of the voice, they catch sight of Shoma and Su standing beside the king on the balcony, their presence casting a shadow of intrigue over the proceedings. The unexpected appearance of Shoma and Su adds an element of tension to the atmosphere, leaving Riho and Roll momentarily unsettled as they ponder the implications of their presence. With uncertainty hanging in the air, they brace themselves for whatever revelations or challenges may lie ahead, knowing that the arrival of these key figures could potentially alter the course of events in unforeseen ways. When the king comes down to meet his soldiers, Ryo approaches him and informs him of the potential danger that Azami is in and asks him to cancel a match. He is hesitant, but when Chrome tells him that the girls are Maria's friends, he immediately sees them as trustworthy people and invites them over for tea to tell them about it in further detail. Meanwhile, back in Cumlin, Lloyd finally finds the pit that Alka is trapped in and opens up its mouth. He jumps in and tells her how he looked for her everywhere on Yud's instructions, but she is too happy to be able to hear anything and simply wraps him in a tight hug. In his arms, she regains her motivation and vows to not let them destroy the world. Since the gate to Azami is broken, Lloyd picks Alka up on his back and hurriedly flies back to the village to execute a plan that Alka claims to have. In the city that night, Yud informs Su that everything has been set up and Su confirms that his slave is ready to start the attack as well. Anticipation simmers between them as they envision the unfolding of their grand scheme, eagerly anticipating the dawn of a new era of dominance and control. With their sights set on world domination, Yuv and Su share a moment of grim satisfaction, knowing that the pieces are in place for their ambitions to become reality. As they prepare to unleash their carefully orchestrated plan upon the unsuspecting world, the night falls silent. Once the duo reaches the village, the creative villagers stuff Lloyd in a cannon to shoot him to Azami. They charge up the cannon with their magic and off goes the hero high up in the sky to carry out Alka's plan in the capital city of Azami. He remembers the urgency of the situation and gives himself a boost midair to speed up his arrival even more. Amidst the fanfare of celebratory fireworks, the king announces the commencement of the exhibition match, signaling the start of a day filled with excitement and anticipation. Alan, clad in his armor and wielding his trusty axe, stands ready to face his hooded opponent, the crown holding its breath in anticipation of the impending clash. With a mighty leap, Alan launches himself into the air, bringing his axe down with formidable force. Yet, to his surprise and the crowd's astonishment, his opponent deftly evades the strike, leaving Alan to cleave through nothing but the fabric of the hood. Gasps of disbelief ripple through the spectators as the hood falls away, revealing the identity of Alan's enigmatic adversary, setting the stage for a thrilling confrontation to unfold. He looks up to see that his opponent is in fact Mykona, who is in mid-air right now, getting ready to make her move. She swoops down at him and headbutts him, which causes him to fly off and crash into the wall. He gets up but Makona tries to hit him with her tentacles without wasting any time but Alan manages to block and cut them off with his axe. As she flies at him, he swings his axe to slash through her but she teleports behind him and kicks him in the face. He is thrown away into the opposite wall which knocks him unconscious. The king is confused about the intensity of the fight and questions Sue about it which leads to him revealing that he wants to form an alliance to take over the world. He wants to combine their technology that makes humans into monsters and Azami's funds and resources to launch a global conquest. Chrome and Mena try to walk up to the king to knock sense into him, but Shoma blocks them from going any closer. But it turns out that they had nothing to worry about as the king reveals that after seeing the pain that he had put his daughter through when he was possessed by the monster, he had vowed to never let anything like that happen again. As he declines, Sue signals Yu to launch the next phase of the plan and the dwarf jumps onto the field. However, she is suddenly surrounded by the girls who have guessed that she plans to steal a holy sword. She mocks them for trying to face the dwarf despite being powerless mortals, but they are all strong, independent women who would not go down without a fight. Eva then jumps into the air and throws down mini poke balls which summon a bunch of giant grasshoppers. The monsters fly up to the audience and Sue threatens to kill Azami's citizens if the king refuses to help. However, to the villain's surprise, they saw it coming and had replaced all the audience members with soldiers and adventurers who immediately take up arms and start fighting the insects. Just then, Melfin shows up on the balcony and transforms into his village outfit to enter fighting mode and take down Shoma. He dashes at him with his god tier weapons and knocks down the entire floor in the process, bringing the fight to the ground. He slashes with his scythe, which Shoma dodges and then follows it up immediately with a swing of his hoe. Shoma manages to escape it just by a few inches and cartwheels away from the crazy farmer. 
Shoma remembers his mission to make the world a more interesting place, so that his younger brother does not grow up in a boring world like he did and gets a motivation boost. He dashes towards Melfin at god's speed and tries to punch him in the stomach, but he dodges. Without wasting any time, Shoma charges up his other palm with magic and hits the farmer with it. Melfin is thrown off into the air and crashes into the audience stands. Meanwhile, Rito is shooting huge blasts of fire and taking out a bunch of pests at once, but there are just too many of them to handle. Amidst the chaos, Makona, with her tentacles poised for attack, targets Maria with alarming speed. Reacting swiftly, Maria's instincts kick in, and she shoves the princess out of harm's way, just as Makona's tentacle lashes out. With Maria safe, Philo swiftly intervenes, intercepting Makona's airborne assault the powerful kick, sending her hurtling into a nearby wall. The group braces themselves for the next wave of threats, their determination unwavering, as they stand ready to confront whatever challenges may come their way. In the balcony, Sue uses his magic to knock out Crone and Mina, and threatens the king to lead him to the sword. Just then, Alan jumps in and swings his axe at the evil lord and manages to cut his arm off. Crone and Mena get back up and are staring in surprise as Sue's arm reattaches itself immediately. That is when they realize that he is not human, which leads him to launch into his backstory. He tells them that he was created using runes by Alka to save and lead humanity when the world was in chaos decades ago. He was supposed to vanish once the world was saved, but for some reason, he stayed bound to the world in a half-baked way. His existence started to fade over time, and he became an unstable presence who was seen differently by every person. He is sick of this kind of existence and wants to disappear completely, but to do that he will have to kill Alka and turn Loy into a hero. Only when he becomes completely evil can he die. Just then, something crashes in the center of the field, and as the dust settles, Lloyd stands up and starts the long process of making his slow brain understand what is going on around him. Once he does, he picks up a stone slab and throws it at the insect that Yu is riding, which knocks her off. She manages to use magic and regain her balance to land feet first on the ground. She takes out her lollipop and throws it into the sky, where it turns into a rune and a huge golem drops onto the ground out of it. It shines a light onto Mikomina, who is still stuck in the wall, and sucks her in to absorb her power. It immediately throws a punch at Lloyd after its power up, but the hero manages to block it with his hands. He picks the monster up and throws it off into the air. It manages to hold onto the king's balcony and jump back into battle. He dashes like Superman to hit Lloyd, but the hero too launches a punch at it, which shatters the golem's hand into a million pieces. To everyone's surprise, though the golem regenerates, but Lloyd manages to slash off its limbs again. It gets back up after regenerating once again and shoots a blast at the hero from the magical crystal on its head. As Lloyd dodges it, he then starts throwing punches again, but the hero manages to jump out of the way. He then changes his direction midair to launch a kick at the golem, but the monster swats him away like a mosquito. Meanwhile, the girls decide to help their master and start thinking of ways to do so. Marita puts out the theory that Mycomina is being used as the core for regeneration by the monster, just as the monster jumps up and crushes Lloyd under its knee. He keeps punching the ground and eventually picks Lloyd up and throws him away. Philo takes charge of dealing with the pests and asks Maria and Rio to go ahead and help Lloyd. As the monster keeps stomping on Lloyd, Melfin steps in and shields the hero with his magical shield. Lloyd regains consciousness after hearing a pep talk that the farmer gives him as he pushes the monster away. Meanwhile, the girls try to encourage Mikomina to wake up and get out of the monster's trap. She opens her eyes just as Melfin dodges the monster's stomp and uses it as a platform to climb up the golem's body. He jumps up into the air and slashes the monster's face with his tools. Makona pushes out of the monster's body and flies free just as Lloyd stands back up ready to fight again. Hugh stands frozen in shock, watching the chaos unfold around her. Seizing the opportunity presented by the distraction, Selen darts forward and snatches Ritra's egg away from the dwarf. With mischievous intent, she begins to pester the snake with her incessant chatter, deliberately invoking Lloyd's name to provoke a reaction. As Selen's relentless banter pushes Vrutra to the brink of annoyance, the ancient serpent can bear it no longer. With a sudden burst of energy, Vrutra breaks free from the confines of the egg, its emergence silencing Selen's taunts in an instant. Meanwhile, Lloyd picks up the golem by its foot, swings it around and throws it away into the air. He then gives himself a boost to fly into the air and punch the golem into pieces. Yu calls out to Shoma and Sue for help, but they are busy paparazzing Lloyd, which reminds her that their entire goal is to make him into a hero. Alka suddenly appears, a portal opening in the sky above her. With a determined expression, she summons a torrent of rocks, raining them down upon the swarming pests, decimating them in a single powerful onslaught. Before Alka can turn her attention to Yu, Shoma swoops in with lightning speed, 
scooping her up and carrying her away from the danger. The evil trio retreats as they realize that they cannot deal with Alka right now. Though their thirst for vengeance remains unquenched, they recognize the need to regroup and grow stronger before attempting to confront Alka again. With a vow to return when the time is right, they vanish into the ruin leaving everyone confused and shocked. The kingdom returns to peace for now as the citizens work their ass off to rebuild the stadium. Melfin comes back as a member of the King's Guard to Colin's delight and Mykona is put under treatment at the infirmary. As Lloyd cooks food for the house party that he is planning to host that evening, Maria offers to help but him being the alpha male he refuses to take help. Just then Alka shows up and is about to jump into his arms when Selwyn's belt appears out of nowhere to hit her. As she jumps out of the way she notices Selwyn standing at the door vowing to be the only girl in Lloyd's life. They both start arguing like cats and Alka threatens to turn her into a lizard. Just as they are about to get into a physical fight, Maria bonks Alka in the head. She reminds her how her immaturity put humanity at risk not so long ago and asks her to grow up. At the same time, Selen is bonked in the head by Rio because she was standing in the doorway and blocking her way. She then simply ignores Selen's tantrum and asks Lloyd to fix a black coffee for her. She is followed by a hungry as hell Alan and Philo. All of them sit at the table to enjoy their Michelin star meal and dig in as they get ready to face a stronger and deadlier enemy in the future. If you like this video, you would love this ugly loser who gets shot and is reincarnated into a new world and unlocks his SS rank powers.